So hey guys, this is my long-awaited San Japan talk video, aka my redo, revamp of my Artist Alley critique that I did, I believe it was last year. Yes, it was last year. And this is something I've wanted to do for a while, and I'm happy that I was actually given the opportunity to do this convention. Uh, for a lot of you guys who don't know, I didn't get in. Holly got in, uh, H.C. Brown on YouTube, and she invited me to table buddy with her and have my first time experience. So if not for her, this probably would have been a long time waiting because I don't know when I would have gotten into a con. And so this video is going to be split up into a couple parts and hopefully it's not too long. If it is very, very, very long. I might just end up cutting it up into two videos, but I have my little, my little, you know, notebook ASMR that I always have with my notes on it so I can try to stay on track. <clears throat> and I'm sorry if my voice sounds different. It is still gone from the convention. Um, that's a lot of things I will talk about later on, but the first part is going to be me literally just going back through my Artist Alley critique video and explaining what has changed, what I've realized, this and that, and some things that have stayed the same. So let's get right into that. Then I'll get into my actual experiences at San Japan. All right. So the first one I had was the early setup critique. And I I was about 50-50 on this one. I was half right and half wrong. So on the first day, Holly and I got there. Well, we didn't even go to the first day. We had a day zero when I flew in. We went in. We had to wait to set up. We couldn't set up till like 5 o'clock at night. So we checked into our hotel. <clears throat> then we went to set up. And it, setting up took a while. I was I was honestly surprised. So this is, again, this is something I learned. And this was two people. There were some people with a lot more elaborate displays than we had. But it did take a couple hours. And I'm happy we did have that day zero to set up. And the issue was the next day, we actually woke up very early, but we decided to not go to the con as early as we could have. We were allowed to be in two hours early before everybody else, and we kind of wanted to just chill and, like, do info. And so when the con did start, we were almost done. And that is something I had said. When people are almost done, I give them a pass, and I still agree with that. There were people that were showing up late, but very few had an excuse. Again, this is where I was wrong. I'm the kind of person where when I'm wrong, I will admit I'm wrong. My friend Brie, Pastel Monster, um, for those of you guys who don't know, we do uh, live streams on her channel every Friday, or try to, but she came really late because of traffic and other details that really kind of fucked her over, and I felt terrible, because I remember thinking about my critique when she was really late, and I'm like, crap, this literally, she had no control over this. So... I was wrong in the, but that's why I say right now I was wrong in, in the 50, 50 cents. She left really, really, really early the day before the con, but because of things that were out of her control, she was still late. There were a lot of people who were there, who were at their hotels, who had set up the night before, like with us and were late. And I feel like, again, unless there are some extreme circumstances that are really out of your control, there is no real excuse to go and not have things set up and ready. There were a lot of people, too, who had their full booths done. And then what they would do, which I thought was really neat, was they would get, like, a sheet and they would cover up their booth so when time would come in for them to come in, they could just, you know, take their sheet off, fix a couple things, and they were good to go. So that was something I learned from that. So, again, 50-50, I was wrong because shit can happen. But at the same time, when you're given that much thing and you are there and nothing is holding you back, there is no excuse. And again, that being said, I learned this firsthand. So now the next thing I have written here that I had, because I tried to do the key points of that video, like in order, and I had was selling more than one thing. And this is something I still believe in. Um, but, 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 I've noticed that now, ooh, voice crack, prints do not sell as well as they used to. I'm not saying they don't sell. Holly sold completely out of hers. But a lot of people were making money off of different things than just prints and just pins. Most of my money, actually pretty much none of my money, I, that's why I have um, my sale going on in my store, is I have a lot of prints left and I have a lot of charms left because most of my things that sold were my little things, were my stickers, my buttons, uh, some commissions here and there. So 
that was something I did learn. I do think you should have variety, but I also believe now there is such a thing as too much variety. So you want to find a good middle ground and whatever you do have, you want to have good quality of stuff. That is something I am proud of. I actually am proud of the quality of some of my stuff. There were some people there that didn't have the best quality. It wasn't as bad as some years. I know I had never gone to San Japan before, so I'm not saying it's that bad, but <clears throat> There weren't people who were, like, making their prints on printer paper. There weren't people who were, you know, um, making, finger quote, keychains out of laminating pieces of paper. Like, a lot of their keychains and charms were actual keychains and charms. Uh, same with buttons. A lot of bu the button game went up real big. Same with stickers. Same with this and that. So, I do think you should have a variety, but you should also offer a lot of little things on top of that to make your money back because I still believe that is true. That's, that's what happened with me and, uh, me and Holly and our table partner who I'm going to talk about in a bit. Cause she was, she was a blast and she also really helped and gave us some good advice. So I still believe in the, yeah, don't sell more than one thing, but look into what's kind of like hot right now, because from what I saw, the biggest thing that was selling for a lot of people were books. Books were selling really big. When I remember previous years, books never sold. So that was what was really interesting. Now, the next thing I have is... Do, 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 do. Oh, okay. So, sorry. I guess still on this because I was rude about this. I didn't realize how rude I was in my last video when I was talking about this, where I was saying like, oh, if you sell originals, I give you a pass. I, again, I was wrong here. I was totally wrong. There were some people selling some beautiful big originals and I was selling some originals and Holly was thinking about selling some originals and our stuff didn't really sell that much. So I take back what I said about originals. I'm sorry. I was wrong there. You can make it work and you can have people really enjoy those. Oops, oops, oops. Really enjoy those. So, all right, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Next thing is taking down things that people are proud of. This I didn't see at all. But that also could be I didn't get to really wander the artist alley as much as I did. But they still think that's dumb. So I hope that didn't happen. And that is, you know, you bought all this merch, you did all this stuff, and then you find something out, and then the day of the con, you're taking shit down. I didn't see any of that. I'm happy I didn't see any of that. Because I still think that's dumb. If you wasted the money getting this stuff made, you should at least sell it. If you're not proud of it, or you no, 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 maybe just discount it to an extreme price. Or, or... At the very end of the con, there was this really cool thing called an art drop, which I will explain more in detail at the end of the video. But seriously, like, there were a lot of ways around it than just, like, just kind of taking it down and hiding it. So, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, prices for prints are cheap as fuck, you know. And I put here, being fair and listening to your gut. So, okay, this was my issue was, again, this is a learning experience. So, I didn't have a lot of time to prepare for the con, so I didn't have a lot of time to make new prints. So all of my old prints were formatted for eight and a half by 11, which in my mind, I was like, that's, that's good. That's a, that's a decent sized piece of paper. People would buy those prints because all the years I would go to AX and, and, and well, AX is the only con I'd ever go to. Um, and I could say art walks and stuff, but eight and a half by 11 was kind of the norm. And so that's what I had done because I was like, oh, this will be fine. And I had I had nice holographic prints, which I still have up in my store. Sound like a, I sound like I'm promoting myself, but I kind of am. <laughs> but the difference was so many people around me were doing much bigger prints for much cheaper. And I believed that the price that I had them at was fair, but they just weren't selling. And at a certain point, I just wanted to sell them. I was kind of done and I wanted to get rid of them. So I lowered the price just a little bit to like where everybody else had their prices at and they were selling like crazy. And so that made me very happy. And so I put here pretty much when you have your print, listen to your gut. And here's the difference, which again, I will I'll go into later, but if making up, I shouldn't say making a profit as next wants to make a profit, but if you're breaking even is very low, which I'll go into in a bit, then it's, you know, fine. You don't have to worry. You can stick to your guns. But for someone like me, who I kind of like, I kind of had to break even, I did have to finagle my prices and fix things. And I'm lucky because I didn't screw anybody over because like nobody bought that kind of stuff on the first day. So on the second day, it helped a lot. And just, just listen to your gut. But a big thing was a lot of people were upset in my last video when I talked about how prints are very cheap to make. 
And they were like, oh, you shouldn't tell people they're cheap to make because then people won't be willing to buy it. And no, I still agree with what I said here. Uh, a lot of people know prints are pretty cheap to make. Uh, you know, even my parents would get like stuff printed for really cheap. So they would know prints are very, very cheap. And a lot of time buying prints, you are supporting the artist overpaying for the physical thing. So, you know, yes, do I think that you're, if your print costed like 69 cents to make, you should sell it for a dollar? No, I don't believe that. I think that if your print is a very big, nice print, it should be at least in the double digits, you know, or even more if it's a limited run. I've seen people do that too, where they're like, I only have like 200 of these and I'm going to write which one it is. And after it's done, it's done. So then they can charge more for that. I think that's more than fair, but I don't believe people knowing the price of what it is to get made is a bad thing. So I still stick to that. Plus a lot of people didn't ask. I don't know. I didn't have people be like, how much did that cost to get this made? So I, a lot of people weren't, weren't dicks like that. There are people who were dicks, but it wasn't like that. So again, still believe in that, but uh, some people might try to disagree. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, Next thing I have here, do, 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 do. but, um, another thing I had talked about was how, like, I, I didn't think it was really right that there were some people with art quality that wasn't that good. Like, and by that, I meant like they had streaky prints. They, you know, um, they didn't spend a lot of time on their art. They kind of slapped it together. The color, like, it just didn't look very good. It didn't look very good. Um, I didn't see like any of that this year. Which also makes me happy. And it's not to, like, dishearten younger artists. That's not what I'm saying here. But I'm saying is when you see people who, like, actually worked really hard on their art and worked hard on their prints and worked hard on this and that, you know, getting all the recognition, well, when you spent maybe 10 minutes on something and you're not getting recognition, you shouldn't be too upset about that. So that's something I still feel is fair, but I didn't see a lot of that this year. So another thing was... And it, it, um, another good thing was the people, like, no one was buying business cards. Actually, on the business cards thing, I saw a lot of people weren't even doing business cards this year. That's something I was surprised at. A lot of people uh, didn't want to take my business cards. They would rather take pictures of it because they would say they would lose the card. And I still like business cards, so I'm still going to make business cards. But in the future, I'm also going to make a little, like, standee because I've seen some really cute acrylic standees. And I'm going to, you know, invest into getting one made where I'm going to have all my social medias and stuff on it because I've seen a lot of people doing that where they have little banners and stuff so people can just take pictures of that and look it up later. And I think that's a really good idea because I would remember, you know, previous years people would get artist cards just to like collect them. They wouldn't even look up the artists and they really do help. Like I remember for the longest time, I didn't think it actually helped, but since I've done the con, I've gained about like in a couple days, I've gained like almost 40, subs 40 subscribers, 40, um, maybe I gained 40 subscribers. I haven't checked, but I've gained like 40, uh, watchers on Twitter. You know, my DA got, I got a lot more people. A lot more people had my fur affinity. I was another thing I was surprised at. I wasn't expecting fur affinity to get a lot. So they do help. And I did like the idea of the standee if you also run out. So that's something that was really cool. I really liked that. I think that was a good thing. And I'm happy people weren't freaking selling their cards. Even Holly, who had really big, like, postcard size cards, she said she did it so that, like, they could have a print, but they were still free, and I think that's fair, you know? When it's a business card or something like that, it should be free. Obviously, if it's an acrylic standee, they ain't taking that thing. They can take a picture of it, but I'm not just giving those away. <laughs> so that was something I really liked. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, the next thing I brought up was the whole bringing cash thing. This was also very important. Um, I had a lot of people asking for change. Some people were dicks about it, where, like, they would buy a $1 thing, give me a $20 bill, and I'm kind of like, uh, okay, here's your change. And then I, I remember it was funny, because at a certain point, Holly and I, we kept bouncing back and forth. We have this little, we had this little O list, because we each needed ones, and, like, neither of us had ones. And then all of her ones were gone, so for the longest time, she was, like, on mine, and it was really funny. But another thing, too, is get a card reader. Get Swipe or PayPal. Get a card reader. It will save you so much money. There are so many people who didn't carry cash who my card reader, I think, honestly made probably about, say, a fourth of the money I made overall at the con altogether. 
And so a lot of them are free. Just get a card reader. It's totally worth it. Yeah, there are some fees and people are like, oh, there's fees. And I'm like, but the fees are so minimal, minimal that it's not going to matter unless, okay, this one thing that did irritate me was uh, towards the end of the con, I had this person come up to my booth and we were packing up. The con was done. We were packing up, getting everything put away. And this, uh, these, these little kids came up and were like, oh, we'd like two stickers. And I was like, okay, $2. No big deal. I still had some stickers on the table. And it was $2. And the mom's like, hey, okay, do you take card? And I'm like, no, it's $2. Just take the stupid stickers. Because honestly, that really did irritate me. Because that's another thing you might want to do is you might want to have it be where you have like a limit. I'm going to do that next time. Where if people want to use the card reader, I'm going to be like, it's a minimum of $5. You can't just do it for $2 or $1. Because I've had a couple people wanting to use the card reader for a dollar. And if you're using it for a dollar, you're not even getting a full dollar. So it's not even worth it. So that's a good thing I'd say. Get a card reader. When you get a card reader, have like a minimum cap. Be like, you know, $5, $10. Whatever you feel is fair. For me, I'd say $5 because I offer a lot of... Ooh, ooh, bump the mic. I have a lot of like uh, small little things that are really cheap. So I, I would feel more comfortable doing that. So... That was a good thing. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, okay. Uh, the next thing I have was commissions. This is where I was wrong again. I was very wrong. I had said like, well, if you have commissions, you should get them done the night before in your hotel, which I had done. I did do this, but I still didn't get enough done in time because of how busy the booth was. This was something I didn't realize, you know, just being an attendee. And I had people coming out to my booth a couple of times being like, is my commission done? And I offered them refunds. And I said, I'm sorry, no. And then I also offered trades. There were some people where I didn't get it done in time. And I said, well, if you don't want a refund, you can get a free, like, you can get a charm or something. And uh, they took that. So that made me happy. And I did feel bad because I remember thinking in the back of my head, that was my critique was I'm like, oh, the artist should get this done. The difference is I offered something bigger than I should have. I, because I knew, I knew in my head, I remember being like, okay, you know, if I wasn't bothered, I can get this done in 30 minutes. It's no big deal. But every few minutes, if if not every minute, there'd be people coming up to both of our booths, talking to us, looking at our stuff, and I'd have to stop and talk to them. So I was wrong about the commissions. And next time I do offer table commissions, if I offer table commissions, depends on how, um, how uh, hectic it's going to be. I'm going to offer small things I can get done in less than 15 minutes because I don't think it's fair to the people and I feel bad that I was so harsh on that critique and I I was wrong. So another really good thing, which is the last thing I have written here, is that um, I talked about how people had like little signs that said like, I have anxiety, don't talk to me. Now as somebody with anxiety and someone with depression, I think it's bullshit because if, you're, if your anxiety and depression is so bad that you can't have people talk to you, then you shouldn't be at a convention. You shouldn't be taking a booth away from somebody who could use it. You can't, you, and you need to talk to people. And even if you're nervous, because I was actually very nervous. This is also something I, I learned, which I'm going to go into in a minute. <laughs> Sound like a broken record, but you need to, you need to be able to talk to people. So I'm happy I didn't see any of those. That made me very happy. And so that's about everything I have here. Now let's get into my actual experiences at San Japan, you know, 18 minutes into the video. So I need to explain a couple of things. First of all, if not for Holly, none of this would have been possible. I didn't get in. I didn't even apply. I actually, with everything going on in my life right now this year at the time of recording this, I had a lot of things going on to where I didn't, I didn't even think about doing a con. I wanted to. I'd honestly wanted to do conventions since about 2015, but I, I was that person where I was like, you know, my stuff's not good enough. No one's going to buy it. I don't have a lot of money to invest in stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kept giving myself excuses pretty much. And I, and I just didn't do it. And then Holly came and we, be, we started becoming friends and she offered this opportunity to me. And I knew I had to take it because this was an amazing opportunity I had never had something like this and I'm, and when you get a chance like this, when you have an opportunity given to you, you should always take it, always take it because you never know where it's going to lead. And I had an amazing, amazing time. I got to meet a lot of my friends. I learned so much, which is very important. And I just had some amazing memories that I'm never going to forget. And so 
thank you, Holly, for making this possible. And I really hope we can do it again next year because it was just, it was so much fun. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty. You guys know I'm very honest and I like being blunt. So I'm going to talk about, you know, how much money I made as well as how much money I put into merch and other things. So this is very important to artists out there. And if this affects my sales on my store, well, you know what? Big whoop. I, I like helping people and informing people because, again, I, this is the kind of shit I wish I had seen when I was younger because then I would have invested, you know, better and learned more from it. So I did, in fact, break even, which is very good for your first con. A lot of people's first cons, they don't break even or they barely break even. Now, I did make profit. I made, after tallying everything up and all my chains, yes, I got a lot of change. A lot of people took game. Oh, the fact that I said I take coins, because I don't mind coins, made a lot of people happy. So I made about $400 profit. All in all, I made about $1,000. But $400 was my profit. $600 was everything else. That was my merch. That was my plane ticket. That was the food I was paying for. And that's about it. You understand that? Very important. Holly paid for the table and paid for the hotel. I offered to split the hotel and split the table with her and uh, also pay for my badge because she had to pay for an extra badge, we found out, and she she wouldn't let me. She still made really good profit. I'm not going to make her numbers, but she made a lot more than I did, and I'm very happy about that. So if, if I had split the table and the hotel, chances are, by doing the math in my head, I still would have broken even or I almost would have broken even, which to me is still a very good success. Yes, everyone wants to make money, but okay, me breaking even isn't like how a lot of other people are breaking even. This was my first con. So all of the merch I had bought previous to this was all investments, was all things I had to, ooh, ooh, bumping again, is things I had to look into. So I put my supplies in that I spent. And since I broke even, now, I'm going to be making more stuff, obviously, for future cons, but I'm not be doing any more cons this year. I now don't have to qualify for those things. So if I make no sales on my store right now and I still have all of my merch, my next convention I do, if I didn't buy any new merch, which I'm going to because I've learned from it, I... my profit will literally... Um, not profit. My break even will literally be my travel expenses, the table... And food. That's a very important thing to look into. Because when you break even with that stuff, you don't need to count that other stuff. So everything you make is a profit. You know, so everything now I'm making from my store is a profit. And that's also very helpful and very inspiring to me. Another thing is your voice is going to go. My voice is still gone. and I've actually been resting for a few days now. So that's something else you need to understand. Is that you need to prepare for things like that. And... There are people, another thing is you need to look around what's around you and see what's the hot thing selling. There's a lot of things that are different every year. I remember one year it was pencil cases. Another year it was enamel pins. A year after that it was um, it was the holographic prints that I was doing. I didn't see anybody else doing holographic prints this year, which was also, you know, a thing to note for next time where I'm like, okay, maybe I'll only do hollow for like mini prints. I won't do hollow for big prints. I'll do like normal prints, you know? Um, another thing was when you want to do this as a business and you want this as a job because you totally can. There are people who do this as a job all, all all the time and they make their income off of cons and things like that you need to take your money and you need to invest it and you need to invest it in things that will help your business grow that will help uh make your money back i recently last time i made a video like this i invested in a button maker this year i invested in a sticker maker well not a sticker maker a sticker cutter uh i got the brothers cut uh scan and cut i think it's called yeah scan and cut and that way I will be able to now make my own stickers. A lot of my stickers I have in my store were made from a friend of mine who has a sticker cutter. And I was like, okay, I bought myself a little treat. I bought myself a video game, but I don't want to spend all my money on just useless stuff. I want to invest back into myself, which is also something very important you need to have. Now, I personally am not going to invest in a printer yet because I'm probably going to do it after next year. 
Next year, I want to do the concert, get hard. I want to apply. I want to try things. A big reason why I'm waiting for the end of this year is uh, because I'm getting married. My name's going to change and seller permit BS. It can be hectic in my state. So I'd rather wait until after I'm married to apply. So I have my new name and yeah, yeah. And not as much stress because sometimes they can be really, really um, to the point with things like that. And you need to have that stuff in hand when you apply for things. So that's also very important. You know, um, another really good thing is, <laughs> this is really sweet. I remember Holly was really concerned after the first day because I made like nothing on my first day. And Holly was really worried that I wasn't even going to break even or even play, pay for my plane ticket. And so thanks to everything that happened and what I learned, I told her, I'm like, well, even if I don't, I've learned so much. And I really have. I learned, I learned a lot about marketing. I learned a lot about myself because even though I can be pretty put together, I was so nervous. And I realize this now where and this was my fault because I was an idiot. I would, our table mate, uh, her Vexy, totally should check her out by the way. She's on YouTube. I totally forgot to shout this out. Vexingly yours on YouTube. She does the same shit I do or she does like speed paint story times and other really cool adventure stuff. Plus her art, mm, good shit. Check her out. Um, you know, I was taking some pointers from her and uh, a good thing was I was standing a lot more. Standing helped a lot. Another thing too is <laughs> where I was nervous. I would say, because people would come look at my stuff and I would be like, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. But then I'd see them looking at something and then I would just spew out how much everything was. They didn't even ask. And it happened so much that I realized... Oh, Holly must have thought I was so fucking cringy because I didn't realize I was doing it. And then every time I would do it, I'd sit back and I'm like, oh, I did it again. And so that's something I learned for for next time is also have have very big, bold, clear prices because people don't fucking read. OK, people don't fucking read. <laughs> Holly gave me this cute little pin board for uh, my charm display. And what had happened was I didn't have any tax or anything. And I was stupid and didn't too nervous to ask for tax. So we ju I just taped my charms on it. And I put a little sign saying, Plez no touch. Because, you know, it's a joke. It's funny. Don't touch it. And so be I would tell people, my only double-sided charms are my diamond ones that I had. And people would still touch it, flip it. The charms would fall. And I ended up fixing this stupid display more times than it was up throughout the entire convention. And I know that affected my sales too, because they see people, people would walk by and they see me just fixing this thing. That's very, that's not very professional. I've learned I'm going to do next time is I'm going to get, um, I'm probably gonna do what my friend Pastel does. Her little standee with ribbon is a really good idea for charms. And that's something I want to start doing when I do do more cons. You know, another thing too is to like, if you can walk around, look at what's going on, see how other people have their booths set up. And, you know, take inspiration from that. Uh, personally, I really like the wire cubes. I don't think Holly likes those, but I like the wire cubes a lot. So I would like to do wire cubes if I had my own table. And another really cool thing I saw was people were doing these little, like, wood standy things that they would put their stuff on. That was really neat. I liked that a lot as well. Another good thing is that I learned, I learned again, I learned a lot about pricing. I learned a lot about, about feeling the room. I learned a lot about, you know, just money management from this con. Um, another thing, too, was, at least from what I know of, uh, you know, uh, no one was robbed because there had been really bad artist alley thefts recently. So from that, what I know, no one was robbed. That's a good thing. I, I'm, wait, I'm wrong. I was uh, a kid at the last day, stole a 10 cent button. So I hope that kid enjoys that 10 cents. I was selling for a dollar, but the things take 10 cents to make. So I thought that was funny. I was like, oh, my first theft, someone stole a 10 cent button. Cry. So that's another thing too. When it's little things, you can't like sweat it too much, especially when it's at the end of the day. And a lot of things have been going so well that you just don't kind of really care. It's also why when that mom came by who was like, can I buy these $2 stickers with my card, I kind of just said, just take them. Cause at the end of the day, I was just, I was done. I was packing up. I had extra stock. I didn't need them in the long run that those $2 are not going to hurt me at all. Um, another really good thing was that I was happy for was artists were very helpful this year. Extremely. There would be so many years where I'd go and I would ask them just basic questions and they would not tell us anything. Anna, Anna, Aeroflex, Dracona can attest to this. We would go and we would ask them just basic stuff like, where'd you get your prints printed? I don't want to say. Where'd you get your buttons done? I don't want to say. 
where'd you get your charms made? I want to do this. Oh, I'm not going to tell you. And it was really rude. It was really rude. And so this year, I don't know, maybe it's because I was a vendor, they were nicer. I, uh, but they were very helpful. They gave me good advice. Um, I got a lot of notes on things to like pick up, invest in, look into. Like I do want to get a print machine, you know, someday, but right now for what I do, it's not going to warrant the price at all. And with the sticker machine, I like the idea because then I can use it for other things. I can offer lower tiered patron stickers now once a month because of it when it comes in. You know, there's a lot of things I can do where I can I can give I can give back, which is something I like doing. Um, another very good thing that we had that I know a lot of people didn't have is food runners. Uh, Zodiac and Quan and Zodiac's mom were very 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 sweet and very helpful to us. Um, you know. They were at the convention in the mall in the area. And so when we were starving, we would kind of like text them and be like, hey, do you guys mind picking us up some food? We'll pay you back. And there were a lot of people who didn't have that. And so uh, I remember offering like to help um, Vexi out with her table. She wanted to like go get a snack because there were so many people who didn't have anything. They literally couldn't leave the entirety of the con. So a good thing for the future would be pack a lot of snacks, pack coolers, pack lunches, pack this and that, because you have no idea how long you're going to be staying there. Another thing too is if you can try to get a table buddy, you don't need another artist if you can't, if you don't, but try to have a table buddy. So that way you have like a pee break person, you know? So, and if not make friends with your table mates, uh, we watched Vexi's table a lot while she went to the bathroom and, you know, other things, because, like, it kind of sucks sitting somewhere for almost five hours. No, it was more than five hours. What am I saying? For hours at a time, you know, and not being able to pee, not being able to eat, not being able to do this and that. And so that was a good thing we learned. And I learned now, you know, next time bring snacks because we're, pro- we're probably not going to have food runners at our next con, you know. And another really good thing, it's the last thing to for me to put on besides the, uh, the art drop I want to bring up is that networking and making friends. I had a great time talking to other artists, meeting other artists, you know, interacting with my online friends that I'd never met before. And I had a lot of people coming up to our booth, coming up to our booth, and they were fans of me and Holly. It was really funny. Uh, this there were, there were a lot of people that actually confused me for Holly. And then later on, we found they watched both of us. So I thought it was funny. And I know Holly was a little embarrassed, but <laughs> I thought it was great. You know, I got to meet a lot of you guys. I got some fan art from people, which was something else I wasn't expecting. And I had a couple people come up to my end where they they recognized my art style. And being told that your art is recognizable in a room full of other artists, that was one of the biggest compliments I'd ever had. That and then this one last person, which was the last person to visit me on the last day. And she was an amazing person and really made this all kind of worth it for me. She was just the icing on cake, icing on the cake for it. And, you know, she knew who I was. She was a big fan. Her sister said that she talks about me in my videos all the time. So, hey, hey, girl. Hey, Dasmond, if you're here, uh, I'm talking to you. I got to take a picture with her. It was very sweet. She told me that, like, I inspired her to do a lot of things. And that inspired me. And the biggest thing was, and I know I'm just rambling for a minute, but that's why you guys are here, isn't it? Um, She told me, and this is what was inspiring to me, was that because of my coming out video, she had the strength to come out to her parents. And that, I'm not going to lie, I was very tired, but that literally made me almost cry because that really made me feel like I am making a difference and not like in an egotistical way, but just that, you know... That's what, I, for me, that's what it's all about. I mean, making money was great, but meeting people who knew who I was, knew my content, knew my characters, knew my friends, you know, just the amazing and the amazing adventures we had, that was the icing on the cake. And that's what made it all freaking worth it and all happy about it. Now, now, before I gush too much, I want to talk about the art drop. I was bringing it up before and I want to bring it up now. This was something really cool. Uh, Vexy told us about it where... Her, uh, their, um, their friend came up and was saying like, Hey, we're doing an art drop. So if you have a bunch of shit you want to just get rid of, you don't want to sell anymore, or you want to just do a trade because you didn't get a chance to look at the artist alley. They had this big thing at the end where we were able to leave some of our prints, get other prints. So I actually got a lot of merch and a lot of cute things that I really liked. 
without spending any money on it. And people were doing the same for me. A lot of people liked my stickers. A lot of people liked my charms that I had up there. They liked my prints. And again, I broke even, so I wasn't hurting in profit in any way. And I'm sure a lot of other people there were doing the same. A lot of people I know were getting rid of like art books they just wanted to get rid of. A lot of people had, um, they had, uh, you know, they had stickers and prints and I got this really fucking cute, like kawaii Jason sticker that I was super happy about. And we also got to meet a lot of artists through that. And that I think all in all was my San Japan experience. I did have one really bad thing happen to me, but I'm not really comfortable talking about it right now. If you really want to know about it, look at Holly's channel and her vlog. She brought it up for me. And that kind of sucked, but I'm not letting that one really bad experience ruin my entire convention and my entire time and have it be where I'm not going to do it ever again because I want to do conventions again. I want to do this again. I want to meet you guys. I want to do this. This was so much fun and I learned so much and I do have to apologize for my Artist Alley critique video from, from a year ago at the time of recording this. Because I was wrong. I thought I knew a lot of stuff as, you know, an outsider and as a researcher. And I didn't. I And I feel like that's something that everyone needs to do is when you're wrong, you need to admit when you're wrong. And I was wrong. And I've learned so much. And hopefully this video helped you out. And, you know, you enjoyed my rambles and my, my tangents and my uh, random pauses while I had to remember things while I was looking through my, my notebook. And so I'm going to leave it here. And as always, guys, I will see you next time and hopefully not with a bad voice. Bye.